Let's try giving a name to this. Go ahead and take your time and work it out on paper. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it more important to have the functional group be the lowest number or the double bond be the lowest number? You want to give the suffix the lowest possible number. Um, yeah, so the functional group. We'll talk more about that in a second. But yeah, you want to give the functional group the lowest possible number. This is my final answer. Okay. This is how I work it out. That's fine. So I don't forget pieces. I won't hold you to it. <laughs> so I think it's going to be. You're thinking about that. Very good. All right, so I was just about to criticize you for not thinking about the stereochemistry, but now you're thinking about the stereochemistry. Very good. So absolutely, um, we do need to name the stereochemistry of this double bond. So it's Z. Good. If that's how you write the where the alcohol is, I would say that's right. Yeah. That's good. I, I, think, I think you actually ended up with the exact right name. That's good. This is pretty complicated, so you, you took your time. Uh, I actually think I might have gotten this wrong, because I actually was, in my head, I was numbering from the right-hand side. I didn't see the trap there. Mm -hmm. So you're right. So, um, so in a sense, um, both the double bond and the alcohol get suffixes here. Mm -hmm. But it's still the, the alcohol that's considered the final suffix. So it's the one that, that um, wants to get the lowest possible number. So yeah, it's more important to give your, this is what we call our principal functional group here, because it's getting the final suffix. That's the one you need to give the lowest possible number. So we're not, um, we're not trying to, if we started the numbering from the right, then the alcohol would be on the one, two, three, fourth carbon. Mm -hmm. So instead, you were correct to, to start the numbering from the left. Where um, in a competition between the alcohol and the alkene, it's more important to give the alcohol the lower possible number. By the way, I think um, it would also be acceptable to write this like this. But actually, I think the way you wrote it is more common. This is, this is maybe more logical, but this is more common. Your, your instructor is probably more likely to write it like this. So either of these would be fine. Um, you can put the 4 in front of the hex or in front of the e. But the way you did it was fine. And this seems very weird, but this is the way you're supposed to do it. And you can't put the number 3 in front anymore, because then it would get confused with the double bond. So the only place to put it is right in front of the suffix. So it seems weird, but this is the exact right place to put the number. And it looks like you knew that, um, so these two groups here are on the same side of the double bond, and it looks like you've memorized that that's Z. How do you remember that? It's going to sound really stupid, because E and opposite both start with vowels. Right. Which is how I remember it. <laughs> Oh, that's it? Okay, very good. That doesn't sound stupid to me. I love uh, memory aids. That sounds great. In fact, I have one that's even stupider, which I like even better. That's good. That's kind of where, where I was. E stands for epposite. So not just are they both vowels, but they kind of sound, sound the same. If the functional groups are on opposite sides, you would use E. But if they're on the same side, you would use Z. Um, always, uh, always makes me a little bit happy to use this uh, memory aid. Well, these two substituents are on the same side, um, so we use Z. In this particular case, this is so simple, you could have used cis as well. Okay. What's the um, difference between cis and Z? I don't know if we want to spend the time on that okay. today. Wait, I've got, I have a, some video series on that if you want to put in the time to look at them. Basically, if there's only one substituent 
on each of the alkene carbons. You can use either cis-trans or EZ. Okay. However, what if there was two substituents on one of the alkene carbons? Then the convention is you have to use E and Z. Okay. And I have some videos that go over exactly uh, how you do that. So, uh, but in this case, there's only one substituent in each carbon, so you can use either cis-trans or EZ. Um, and this is fine here. So earlier I was cautioning you, don't forget about putting in R and S um, on nomenclature, because that's an easy way to lose points. But that's pretty easy to remember because the, the wedges and dashes will alert you. This is much harder to notice because there's no wedges and dashes. So you really got to make a mental note to yourself, watch out for double bonds. Some double bonds need easy nomenclature. Of course, some double bonds don't. This doesn't have any easy nomenclature because there's two substituents of the same type over here. But many double bonds do have stereochemistry and you need to use easy nomenclature. Incidentally, is this a stereocenter? Yes. Yes. Um, so technically, we, we're supposed to use R and S here, but since the instructor didn't tell you whether this is on a wedge or a dash, you don't know whether it's R or S, so we can ignore that. So um, uh, technically, uh, even if something is a stereo center, you still can't put in the R and S unless the instructor gives you the wedges and dashes. So it looks like the instructor wanted you, wanted you to ignore the stereochemistry of carbon number three in this case. We're only paying attention to the stereochemistry of the double bond. Sometimes E and Z is put in parentheses. Let's do an easier one, first of all, just to get the basic ideas. Let's give a name to this compound. What's the name um, of this? That is a... Let's take your time and write out the full name. Let's talk about that. I think you might be misremembering what the, the, the root is for three carbons. Butte means four carbons. Oh. stand for one, two, three, and four carbons. My memory aid for that is men eat pickled beets. Men eat pickled beets. Anyway, the number of three carbons is propyl. Now, I think one thing you might have left out is the di yeah, over here. So there's two functional groups, so we have to call this a diol. You correctly put in the two numbers here, one, two, and three. So this is one, three, propane, diol. Incidentally, if the suffix starts with a vowel, you can leave off this e. But if the suffix starts with a, with a consonant, you leave in the E. Okay. Some, some instructors don't care about that very much, but I, I like knowing about that. So here I'm leaving in the E because the next letter is a consonant. And here I left out the E because the next letter was a vowel. Okay. All right, the main thing I wanted to go over here is that if there's more than one alcohol, that's a diol. All right, so now we can try I this. Think I got it right doing that one, but I missed it on the oh, Okay. 
Sometimes the easy ones get me. That is true. Sometimes the simpler <laughs> examples uh, can give people more trouble. One methyl one two cyclopentane diol. Complicated. Uh, one methyl one two. Oh, I forgot my stereo chemistry. Not done yet. I was just getting. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. You're just pausing for breath. Pentane diol. 